Hey everyone, Andy here from Tech OBS, and today I'll be showing you how you can properly set up your generic controller. It could be pretty much any generic controller. For today, we'll be testing out this controller from Habit. I think the model is Habit HVG69, I believe. I got this for around five bucks, and I'm surprised to see that it has vibration motor switches really really cool and i'll also be showing you how you can make your controller go from this boring state to this as you can see it is vibrating and it is moving and so yeah it took me a long time to figure out how to actually use this controller with the vibration and yeah it took me a long time to figure out how to set up this one so today i'll be showing you how you can set up your own generic controller so all right so i've connected my controller and as you can see if i press the analog button it turns red so it means it's connected so I'll be giving the links in the video description as well as the instructions on how you can set it up yourself I've, I'll be giving this in the description as well first of all what you want to do is to open up two different links I've got the idea from this video but don't worry I'll make it easier to understand so first of all download this which is the speed link driver it's called universal joystick driver and I've already downloaded it and you can see it over here, Universal Joystick Driver Speed Link. So you need this one. And for the second program, you need this program, which is Xbox 360 Controller Emulator. So what this will do is that basically it will emulate your controller like an Xbox controller. So you just go ahead and click on this download for all games. And I've also downloaded the zip file of this as well. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and install this Speedlink driver. Go ahead and click on next. And there you go, we have the driver. Now, if you wanna test it out, you can search set up USB game controllers and you can see it will now say Speedlink Strike Gamepad and you can go to properties, test out the buttons. So by pressing the analog button, I can use the right joystick as well. So everything is working fine. Let's see if the vibration works or not. And yeah, it does work. You can also adjust the rumble intensity as well. So anyway, that's the driver. Now we're gonna go ahead and extract this. Now what you wanna do is to cut this or copy it, whatever you want and then go to C, and then go to Program Files, and then paste this bad boy right over here. Go ahead and click on Continue, and there you go. You can now go ahead and launch it from this, but you need to run this as administrator. So to make it easier, just go ahead and click on Send to Desktop, and you can probably rename it, and then right-click Properties, go to Advanced, and choose run as administrator. So let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. And oh, it actually remembers my settings. <laughs> so let's go ahead and remove it just for a test purpose. So let's remove this and click on add. And you can see we have our controller right here. So click on this and there you go. All right, now go ahead and click on issues to see if you have any issues or not. Most likely it will tell you to install an Xbox driver in the issues option. So if that does, go ahead and install the Xbox driver. And once that is done, you can go ahead and test out the vibration in force feedback. So click on this and make sure you have enabled this and you can increase the sensitivity of the test to see if the controller is vibrating or not. So let me increase the sensitivity. And yep, it is vibrating for sure. I can definitely feel the controller vibrating. So right now you can see it's not vibrating. And now if I go ahead and increase the sensitivity to 100, now look at, look at it. <laughs> so if the vibration is working, you can go ahead and click on general and then remap the controls. To save your time from manually remapping all the buttons, you can go ahead and click on auto and it should pretty much remap all of the buttons automatically. But if you have any issues on a few buttons, you can always go ahead and manually adjust each buttons. And yeah, once that's done, you can go ahead and click save all. And maybe that's why my configuration was set up, even though I've deleted the file. All right, so let me test out the controls and right in front of you guys as you can see right here it's working the buttons everything it's working just fine all right so once all the controls are set up don't forget to do a quick restart 
and then try it out again and you should hear a USB connecting sound and yeah you're ready to go now if you want to test it in a game don't close this minimize this so go ahead and open up your favorite game that you want for me I'm just gonna try overwatch all right so right now I'm using the mouse as you can see right here now if I use the controller the layout should change a bit and as you can see right here I can also move it with the controller as well. And remember, whatever game you're running, make sure the game supports vibration. As you can see, this game supports vibration. And as you can see, it is enabled. Let's go ahead and select a competitive match and select that match. And so I'm gonna use my controller to pick up the player. And as you can see, when I move it, it works fine. Let's go ahead and play Genji, because I'm a Genji main. And guys, as you can see right here, it's working just fine. Oh my god. As you can see right here, the controls are working just fine and... Do your worst. No, no, don't kill me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a controller pro player. <laughs> Alright, I just had to do a quick restart of the Xbox program and now the vibration is also working. Oh, right, I just gotta kill somehow. <laughs> and so, yeah, that is how you set up your generic controller. So, if you guys did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. So, yeah, stay tuned.